everybody. Quick question before we get going today. Would you rather get stuck in your favorite MMORPG, just wiping out, like in raids or whatever your favorite flavor is of playing? Would you, I mean, you're just wiping out, right? You're not winning at all. Or would you rather go on a losing streak in Magic the Gathering? It's a tricky question for me, because sometimes you think if you make every play right, you're going to win more games than you lose. And sometimes you make all the moves right in your RPGs and you still lose, and it's just like, you know what? Whatever. Um, for me, I would rather not lose in Magic the Gathering. That's harder to deal with sometimes, so I would opt for wiping out in raids. Today we're going to talk about Is It with Terramander. I feel like Terramander was made for Is It. So do remember to subscribe for more content just like this, all the event videos. I end up doing and uh, all the pack openings. I try and show you guys how to do this on a budget. This is a very budget friendly deck. My name is Justice and my handle is Arcantuna. Let's take a quick look at the deck tech. Is it? It's red and blue. We've got three dive downs. Uh, this is how we're going to protect our creatures in the event of uh, any kind of removal. It's a one blue target creature, it gets hex proof and plus O plus three. So you can use it to block a big creature and kill it or, you know, if they kill one of your creatures, Chupacabras, or Vraska's Contempts, or Murders, or whatever's Mortify, there's a whole lot of removal right now, so it's kind of nice to have something to keep a creature alive. And with a deck like this, you only need to keep your creatures alive for pretty much one turn. A lot of times that'll win you the game. Four ops, it's a one blue instant scry one, draw a card, so you can look at the card and then put it in the bottom of your library. If you don't want to draw it, then draw the next one. Four Terramanders, a one casting, one one flying. Now for eight mana, it adapts for four, so it becomes a five five. But in a deck like this, where the ability costs one less for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard, there's a pretty good chance this gets down to one blue real quick, and so it's all of a sudden a two casting five five flying. That's pretty tough. And I think, I haven't played this deck yet, but I think this is going to be very strong. So we will see. I think this is where Terramander is going to really shine. Running three spell pierces, a one blue counter target spell, unless it's creature, counter target non creature spell, very important there, non creature, unless it's controller pays two mana. Four shocks, a quick little one red for two damage, and it's a nice way to get an instant in the graveyard. Four charts, of course, one and a blue, draw two cards, then discard unless you attack with the creature. This also isn't bad to get some, uh, some of that graveyard presence built up. You could discard an instant or sorcery instead of a land, and then you put two in the graveyard. It's kind of nice. Um, and this is a very budget-friendly deck. Very budget-friendly and should work pretty well. For Lightning Strikes, now you could put in Lava Coil here. I like Lightning Strike in the main board better because you never know if it's going to be a creatureless deck. And if there's a whole lot of creatures, odds are a 3 damage would kill the creature, or you can choose to go 3 damage to your opponent. So I like the option better there than Lava Coil. Lava Coil is a fantastic sideboard card if you're going best of threes. For discovery and dispersal, uh, we're only going to use the discovery side. Well, not only, like 99% of the time, there is one black mana source in the deck for dispersal to run. Um, but the discovery side is you surveil to then draw a card. So you surveil, you look at the top two, and you can put either one of those in the graveyard, and then you draw a card. On the dispersal side, each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost. So whatever they have that costs the most mana goes back to their hand, and then they discard. And that can be useful too, especially if they don't have a hand, whatever their cost the most gets discarded. For Enigma Drakes, this is a 3 casting 0 4 flyer, but it gets uh, plus X where its power is equal to whatever your graveyard is for instant and sorcery cards. It's very useful. Unless you exile those cards to jumpstart. So that's that's a thing. It's only one jumpstart card in here, which is Chemister's Insight. It's the uh, another card draw source. Four mana, draw two cards, but it jump starts, which I like it for the jump start reason. So you could discard it and then still cast it later. Um, that's that's why it's in there. And there's only one because I feel like this deck would be really fast. So I wanted to keep the mana cost low and not add too many too many high casting cards. It's it's pretty quick. It stands to reason that this would be a pretty quick aggro. Is it Drake deck um, and very budget friendly. There's there's no rares. Um, it's just uncommons and commons. It's pretty nice. Well, there's a rare land. Um, four Crackling Drakes, two blue, two red. It's a 0-4 flying, and just like Enigma Drake, it gets its power from the 
instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard and exile. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. So if you need card draw, slap it down, you draw one. It's kind of nice. Eight islands, four mountains, three highland. This is where you can play with the mana base if you've got the uh, the budget for it. Three highland lakes, four is at guild gates, one sulfur falls, and I've got one blood crypt. This is the mana source. Uh, you could go with a blue and a black mana source if you have one here, uh, which which I do. There's probably a better way to do this, but I like the option to pay two life and have it come into play untapped. <clears throat> and that's the deck, so let's take a look at how it's going to play out. Oh, I don't want to play goblins. We'll do, we'll do Is It Drakes. And you could beef this up with um, Niv Mizzet. I might do that in a week or so to kind of play with this and see where the top end lands, see where the bottom end gets me. And then maybe we'll update it with Ral. Is it Viceroy? Oh, I, like, I kind of like this. I'm going to hang on to this hand. I think this is going to be very slow with all this blue and these two mountains. But I don't want to get stuck without, <clears throat> without three land. And I'm going to have to draw one eventually. So I like dive down two Terramanders. We are playing first, so I, I think even though this is not as fast of a hand as we would want, I think we'll be okay. Our opponent took one mulligan so far, and lucky for him, we just have a tap land. Now, if this was a steam vents where we could pay two life, we definitely would have made that move and got our Terramander on the board already. Hmm. Well, not terrific. But our one crackling drake should be able to munch anything our opponent has. He's got a hunted witness down which is nice. This looks like it's Boros Aggro. We're not going to block, because Hunted Witness just creates another 1-1 one, one creature anyway. It's, it's pretty strong. And there goes the Legion's Landing. So, alright. I'm going to drop the Terramander. And that's going to give me enough of a mana source to cast a Dive Down or a Spell Pierce, but not both. And then I will have the mana base to cast Crackling Drake next turn. So I'll have two red, two blue for the Crackling Drake, and that's all the mana I need, in theory, for this whole deck. So it should work nicely. Pretty much whatever he plays, I'm going to try and counter. I'm not going to be able to block that. That's no good. I should have blocked to cast my dive down. Uh, yeah, we spell pierce that, for sure. No history banalia for our opponent. And we play our Crackling Drake, which will end up being a 1-4. We'll draw a card, and we will hope. Okay, so not terrible. We have some, a couple of burn cards. Now, here's the thing. We can burn his creatures down. And then our Crackling Drake will become a 3-4. And if we need the dive down, it'll be a 4-4. Four four, so we can attack with it freely. And now we can start looking at Terramander and adapt him, too. So he'll be 1, 2, 3, 4. Huh. Yeah. All of a sudden, for four more mana, he becomes a 5-5. Five, five. I think it's going to be strong. Well, this is a good a good test here with this game. So he takes Crackling Drake with Conclave Tribunal, not realizing that we're about to go ham with our, our Terramanders. Oh, well, there's another Crackling Drake. Why don't we do it? The odds of us drawing a land are pretty good. Oh, and it's, it's not bad. I don't think he has another Conclave Tribunal. Of course, he might. I don't mind so much. Uh, the slower this game goes for him, the better, because he's playing more of an aggro deck. I think he's holding some nice stuff. A Johnny's Aurelius, perhaps. Who did he protect? His token. Okay. So, let's cook the Dauntless Bodyguard. Which he's going to sacrifice him to protect the token, of course. It's an excellent move. Shock doesn't have an effect. We will lightning strike our opponent right in the noggin. Crackling Drake gets bigger. And we will attack. I sort of wish that the... where it's got the cost for adapt, I sort of wish that updated with how much it actually cost. Because it's only going to cost us 5 mana at this point. 
I will probably get the opportunity to cast a dive down on one of my creatures this turn. Unless, unless this is a terrible creature. Heroic reinforcements, that's not bad. Okay, it doesn't scare me too much. Go for it. And that's the game. So we can lightning strike our opponent upside the head. He goes down to six. This is six right here. That's that. He can't stop it, not for one mana. Still, I think I've adapted Terramander like once in my life. Still didn't adapt in this game, although it was versus aggro. And I think adapting him is more like a late game play anyways. So versus aggro, it ends up being pretty strong, though our opponent was stuck on three land for a while. We were stuck on four land that whole game, so... It seems to work out. Four mana is all we need in this entire deck. There's nothing... Nothing over four. Okay, so now it's kind of the opposite. We are... We've got all the blue land we could possibly imagine. Ooh. Okay. All right, all right. slower. It's going to take us a few turns, you know, three turns to get our Enigma Drake out. But I could do a second turn Blood Crypt and let it come into play tapped without having without having to worry about not casting a green or a black spell. And there's no, like I said, there's only one black mana source in the whole deck, and this is it. And it's not like we rely on the dispersal side of Discovery. It's really more of a discovery card, and then you can graveyard. That's a quick way to get cards in your graveyard. Let's see what our opponent's got playing here. Hopefully, it's nothing too quirky. I think we would be susceptible to one of those, like, Gates Ablaze decks. You know what I'm talking about, where it's like the Gatebreaker Rams and Gates Ablaze and all the, the terrible gates. Alright, so... Hmm. Well, we'll let this come into play tapped. No reason not to. Are we on for a 0-4 Enigma Drake? I probably should have Spell Pierced that just to get the Spell Pierce in my graveyard. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I could always lightning strike him on my turn and attack for one. Something like that. Another opt? This is crazy. You never want to counterspell an opt, but I have a feeling he's digging for land right now. So I'm going to counter it. <laughs> I think he was. I think he was. Yep, we'll Drake. And we have a 1-4 Drake. Woohoo. So he's really hurting for land, which is fine. I think if we... If we let him have this opt, he might have... Okay, well, that's not a display of the deck at all. Although it is fast. We, we could have hit him for almost 10 that turn, and he would have been at something like 7 on turn, turn 4. It's pretty good. Pretty good. And it's super budget, too. You could easily sub in Niv-Mizzet if you have one. Ral is a Viceroy if you've got one. He'd be a great addition. Although Crackling Drake and Enigma Drake are pretty good top ends in themselves. They only die to... Um, oh boy, this is way too expensive. Your Drakes would die to uh, like a Rekindling Phoenix for sure. Oh, Fooey, I've got a good land here, but, but I don't have a regular island or mountain. Uh, yep, definitely hanging out of this hand. That's good. We'll keep the opt for sure. Oh, and if this is aggro, we lose. This is way too slow of a start. There's no way we can compete with, uh... Anyway, maybe if I shoot Pound it's not too scary, so... Maybe, though we don't have any, any, um, life gain. Wow. I would rather not take two every turn. So I'm going to kill this Pyromancer. I know that's not the best move to make. And he can activate... Um, he can activate his other cards, light up the stage, and with that Spear Spear, where he deals one damage to each of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
He's got lava runners anyway, but doesn't have enough instant cards to make him activated. Boy. So Blood Crypt is going to come into play tapped. And then we're going to opt on our turn. No reason to wait. I like an island. I do. We're going to draw it. And I'm going to hang on to my Spell Pierce just in case he taps his Spear, spear, spear Activate Spectacle and tries to do a Light Up the Stage. I'm going to Spell Pierce his Light Up the Stage. Or skewers. I mean, and his, that would activate his pyromancer or his uh, lava runner. Right? Yeah, I had a feeling. Okay, I can't let him draw the cards, so I'm gonna make him spend the mana. He's got it. Okay, and he needs it, but now he can't use the cards he he exiles with light up the stage. Okay, so that's my only hope. And I really need to draw into some some creatures. Yeah, I don't need the dual land, so I can discard the Highland Lake if I need to. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do one more. This is this is tough. What do we have in here? One, two, three, four. We've got five in the graveyard now. Can we survive long enough against mono red aggro to get any creature on the battlefield with We can't protect him. He dies to lava coil. He's got a lightning strike in his hand. So I could, at this point, Wizard's Lightning, me, ouch, ouch. Okay, well, yeah, this is probably going to be the game. He, any direct damage spell wins. Yeah, okay. So, maybe it's important to mulligan hard for a Drake in your opening hand, or maybe if you have one in your opening hand, you got to keep it, because against Mono Red Aggro, we lose. I guess that's kind of normal. That's a faster deck. It's almost like you'd want to sub sideboard in a creature that could block down or eat some burn so again we don't have a creature to play and we've got the slow lands and we're on the the draw so if this is aggro I can I got it I gotta keep this hand because I like chart a course and discovery. That gives me good options. But we also have a shock this time. Well, we had a shock last time too, and I shocked down as uh, as Viashino. and that's two damage every turn. Okay, so it looks like Demir. We're gonna go with the gate. I have to get the dual lands going. Are we gonna have a thought erasure? Yep. So what does he take? Discovery dispersal. I think this is the best card to take in this instance. Where he could let me have a shock. He takes the spell pierce. To me, that says he's got something he wants to cast. Chupacabra. He thinks I'm creatureless. But I'm not. Mm, I'm going to go with a mountain. And I'm going to drop a discovery. I'm going to graveyard both of these. Nope, I'm not going to graveyard the discovery. I'm just going to graveyard the opt. And then I'm going to graveyard... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burglar Rat, so I've got a discard. I'm going to discard the chart, of course. I think I'm good with card draw for now. I'm going to play a red mana source. We're going to shock the Burglar Rats just for good measure, and I'm going to play another Discovery. I like I like both of these, except I want Enigma Drake sooner. Cool. And then I can pay two life for... Oh, I need the blue! Oh, rats! That won't work. Oh, no, it will. 
Well, either way, I need the tap land and then the Drake comes in. Oh, unless he's got counter spells at this point, though. So it looks like he doesn't. But I've already got six in the graveyard. Oh. Jerk. Already on turn five, so mana slowed me down quite a bit. It can enter tapped, that's okay. We're gonna have to discard now, right? It's fine, I'll discard the opt. He can get back a chupacabra, and that's no good. I could try my hardest to somehow draw into a dive down, that would work. Unless he discards. Okay. Well, we're getting controlled out. Too slow of a start. Yet again. Yet again. He must have something that could potentially keep me from, from drawing a card. So here's our Terramander. Maybe our Terramander could do something. I'm going to have to discard again, yeah? He goes with... Crackling Drake over his own Chupacabra, which is interesting. I've got a discard. I'm going to go with Lightning Strike. He must have another Eldest Reborn in his hand. Now, should I cast these? Because they will die to Ritual of Soot. What are the odds he takes my Enigma Drake? I think Enigma Drake is the stronger card at this point. Because it would be uh, an 8-4. Yep. He adapts for 1. That's terrific. He knew that was coming. Okay. That's unfortunate. I don't know. Terramander's still kind of weak then. I think he blocks this down, and then just gets it right back. Or does he have another fungal infection? Of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? So we're actually doing pretty good against this control deck. Now what's he going to take? He's got to take one of my drakes again. Because now there's no reason for him to take a Chupacabra. He draws a card. That's strong, though, for him. <clears throat> Tezzeret. The Artifice Master. I have constructed Draw a card. Hmm. Well, does he have another fungal infection? He probably does. This is ridiculous. This is like a fungal infection, Eldest Reborn deck that makes me discard everything. And he's got card draw? Yeah. You can just keep drawing with uh, it is the Tezzeret. I don't think that's the right idea, though. I can't get rid of these creatures. This is where Lava Coil might come in handy against your own creatures. So if we were sideboarding, that's what I'd sideboard in. This is nine damage we're looking at. And a Thief of Sanity. Well, that's the game. We are susceptible to control if we don't get it right. We don't get the, a good draw. I'm going to leave this island in my hand. Just in case he wants to, like, Thought Erasure and try and make me discard whatever he thinks that might be. Of course. Why, why wouldn't he just, just take it? That's what he's trying to do. Dive down, that game would have come in handy. At any point, could have used a dive down. Would have saved one of my creatures from a fungal infection. Oh, that was a disappointing loss. Hmm. I'm just so on the fence with Terramander. I want it to be good. I think I want it to be good so bad, but it's just not not giving me the strength I need. It's just it's taken apart by by fungal infection. Before it can even adapt, it's like, oh, you're dead. We 
Well, we've got the blue. We're on the draw yet again, so this is going to be an uphill battle. But I don't have enough to cast any of my other spells, so I'm going to have to take a mulligan. I don't, I don't like that hand. Okay, so here we go with our ideal draw. One, two, three on curve Enigma Drake, which could be a, a two, four if we, if we do this right. We play chart of course. I like opt, if nothing more than to discard the chart of course on turn two when I have to. Then there's some generalized chance that we could adapt Terramander on turn four. No, turn five at the earliest with a turn three Enigma Dream. Let's do it. We'll chart a course. I could have attacked first, but part of me wants to put this opt in the graveyard. So that way there's two in there. He's looking at me like, what are you doing that for? Well, I actually want more cards in the graveyard at this point. Now let's see. This looks like Merfolk, so let's see what he's got. Silvergill, I'm okay with that. Riverwise Augur. I haven't seen this in a Merfolk deck. Draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library. So that's kind of a neat deck filter card draw option there. <laughs> And I want to go with Enigma Drake. It's a 2-4. It's a scary blocker. So he's going to have to make some decisions here. He might be able to bounce it. He just plays Kumina, which is a great choice. We're going to drop an Is it Guild Gate. I want to shock the Kumina Speaker here. He could tap them to draw a card, but then he's got to tap them, and I'm okay with that too. And once again, we're going to chart a course before we attack, so that way our Enigma Drake gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It looks funny to do it this way, but on the off chance, well, shucks. I'm definitely not discarding any of those, but now we have a 4-4 to attack with. We've got four instant sorcery cards in the graveyard, so our Terramander's adapt cost four. Which we could do. And then slap him for nine. That's kind of kind of exciting. Every one mana spell I can put into the graveyard next turn doesn't make this any cheaper for me that turn, but I could if I draw into some some discard like a Discovery Dispersal, that potentially puts three in the graveyard. And that would make this cost one. Or a Lightning Strike. I could zap them all. Well, yeah, let's just... It's worth more this way. <clears throat> we'll just go face. And this is why I like Lightning Strike. Because Lightning Strike is optionally damaged right to the face, right? So he's going to go down to seven. He's going to go up to six, and that's going to be game. That's that's game. He can't block flying. So one weakness for Merfolk is they can't block flying. And this would have been an acceptable draw against that red aggro deck that we saw, too. We might have been able to stay alive long enough to beat it. So sort of depends on the draw. It's actually not performing too bad. Not too bad at all. I kind of like this. See what we got going on. I'd like to see it against <clears throat> against the control deck. Oh, speaking of control decks, look to answer threats early and play big creatures or powerful cards to win the game. I love control. Although I guess we did play it against that black uh, Demir control. That that wasn't very fun. Okay, so again, we go first. We've got our Terramander. We've got a blue mana source. This looks good. Even with our slow lands, we can opt on turn two and then play a tapped Highland Lake and potentially draw into land with opt if we need to. Or if we draw a land, we could put it on the bottom of the library. There's a lot of options here. Options. Ha! <laughs> okay. Let's 
Let's see, what are we playing against? This would be a good test. Okay, looks like Boros colors. We did really well against Boros before. I like... I like Discovery here. I do. Because I can start trashing everything that's not the land I need for my Enigma Drake. While also making a turn 4 Drake. Unless we get land, then we could do a turn 3 Drake. Or if we get a tap land, I could do Discovery. Well, what's he got? This is weird. Black, red, and blue. So now we've got the land for this. What I'm gonna do... I'm gonna save... I'm gonna leave Dive Down open. We're gonna Discovery. Oh, boy. I can Drake, but I can't... I can't do a Crackling Drake. Hey, you know what, though? I'm gonna draw a card with Discovery. And then next turn, I'm going to draw a card again. So, I know I'm going to draw into the Crackling Drake, but I'm going to Discovery again. So, it's not like it's going to cost me all that much. And I don't want to Graveyard it, because that doesn't benefit the deck at all. So, having creatures in the Graveyard doesn't matter. <clears throat> it does slow me down significantly, though. Let's see if he counterspells this. Oh, he doesn't have any counterspells. He can't. All of my creatures will survive Deafening Clarion. Okay, so I like the land. We're going to trash Charter Course. Just gets it in the graveyard for us. We'll play a land. Swing in for one. And it feels like we're rolling. So I think even against with this hand against an aggro deck, we're still in trouble. Almost like it needs a faster, to be faster on curve here. Creating, he can't create a creature, doesn't have the mana for that yet. There's a debate for letting him kill my Terramand over the shock, or a Mortify. And then saving my dive down for an Enigma Drake later. I'm gonna let it happen. Though I know it, with m Dive Down in the Graveyard, it's more of a benefit down the road. That's that's true, but I do want to save it for my Enigma Drake. They will pack more of a punch, because they will be... Right away, they'll be 4-4s. Four <clears throat> and they're only one. If I Dive Down my Enigma Drake, he becomes a 5-4. And so he's got an equal power to the uh, Terramander. Oh, he's doing Theater of Horrors. This will be interesting to see this. Oh, how exciting. end our turn. He exiles the planes and he can't do anything about it uh, because we haven't lost life. Let's see what we got. Nothing. He's just going slow. Okay. It's a very tough decision to play that Sacred Foundry. Maybe he was imagining weighing the options of playing a tapped. Okay, so I'm going to opt, and this is where he cooks my... Well, he can't Lava Coil. That's the sorcery. That's why I wait till the, uh, the end step. I like Crackling Drake. I don't want to get rid of those ever. And then we'll draw into another Enigma, and we'll just keep playing Enigma Drakes at this point. Uh, it's going to leave that blue mana open for my Dive Down, and that Dive Down is very important. So we, more, we save him from Mortify, and now he takes six. And if he can't resolve both of them this turn, he, he dies. If he can resolve one, he lives another turn. Of course, Lightning Strike and Enigma Drake it ends up being very strong. That might be game. That might do it. Okay, uh, won't. That's a Kaya's Wrath. There are no counter spells in this deck, so interestingly enough. Go ahead and play a Crackling Drake. We'll draw a card. It's a mountain. Woohoo! He's just not getting anything out of this. 
theater of horrors, which I don't like. I mean, you could pay four to do one damage and activates the sort of what's like a spectacle ability, and then you've got to pay mana for that without paying their mana cost. You still have to pay their mana cost. Okay, so he Ixalan's bindings on my crackling drake, which is very disappointing. Sorry, I've got more drakes. I've got more drakes. If he targets if he targets my crackling drake, I will of course dive him down. That'll make him a 7-4. I can't play Crackling Drake due to Ixalan's binding, which is not very not very nice of him to do that to me. Exile target card from a graveyard draw card, so he can't consecrate my Enigma Drake away, but he can lava coil it, and that doesn't make me very happy. He lava coils. I dive down, he doesn't have any more options, unless he's got like cast downs in there. That would not be that wouldn't be awesome. Oh he consumes. Mm. And I can't dive him down from a consume. He gains life equal to its power. That's not awesome. Okay. Did not understand how that side of the card worked. Now I get it. Hmm. I'm just saving my lightning strikes. I don't think he's running creatures, but you never know. Consume is pretty good. It's a nice way to get rid of... It's a nice way to get rid of, like, Carnage Tyrants, too. Start zapping him. I don't think he's playing creatures, so may as well put him in the graveyard. Boy. Hmm. Maybe I should have killed my own Enigma Drake to prevent him from getting the life. He'd be a little lower. He did gain a healthy bit of life there. That was unfortunate. Nothing to do about Ixalan's binding. So this deck could be a little more defensive also. Yeah, and he can just make little dudes. I'm still on the fence about Ill-Gotten Inherit or Theater of Horrors. Not Ill-Gotten Inheritance. That's a nice card. Theater of Horrors, though. It's a nice popper card, too, isn't it? Angrath. Yeah! I was wondering when I would see Angrath in in some uh, spectacle-style decks. That's great. Yeah, boy, that's gonna be the game. I, he's gonna keep me from doing anything at all. He can take, a, take control of a creature. Any creature I play, I can't. This is nice. So we're really susceptible against control with this no deck, fire, too. No steel. I'm gonna discard the Crackling Drake. And then we're gonna shock the little guy. So... I mean, aside from adding counter spells, we might think about... Maybe we're just gonna end up discarding this dive down. We might think about some some bounces. Blink of an eye, maybe. Some elements of control or another creature. Like a like a two in the two space, a two casting, two two. Or 2-1 with flying like a kite sail freebooter? No. A war kite marauder. A war kite marauder, which is a 2-1. A no I can tap down another no creature. Steel. Or maybe Tempest of Gems might be in order for this deck as well. Instead of what, though? Hmm. Not positive. I'm actually pretty happy with how this hand started out. And now we are. Ooh, each opponent loses life equal to the number of cards in their graveyard. Engrath has built to beat us. 
Uh, we'll just we'll let him play it out. Go for it. I'll discard it. I don't, well, I'm gonna just stab him with it. But then he's gonna build him up eventually, and then make us make us pay. So we'll lose 16 at this point. We've got 16 cards in the graveyard, which is exactly what we're looking for. But Angrath is built magically just to beat us. There's no way we can come back from his life gain. And the uh, crackling Drake in jail. <laughs> That's terrible. Theater of Horrors? It's not terrible. It's just, I mean, it's an enchantment, and those tend to get, get killed. Although, maybe they don't. Maybe these kind of enchantments, like non-creature auras, creature auras tend to get nuked when the creature dies, but these enchantments will stay in play for a while. No fire, no and if we had any kind of enchantment removal, I mean, obviously we don't, so... Um, we are highly susceptible to crap like this if we don't get off early and, and start, you know, getting some attacks going. Although, maybe a fourth dive down would be in order to... Hmm. Seraph of the Scales is an interesting choice. This makes me feel pretty good. Alright, I think we're good there. We'll call it here. This is going to be a loss for sure. So, overall this deck is okay versus... Um, even versus aggro. I think this deck has a chance uh, to stall an aggro game long enough and sneak in for the win. But it is highly susceptible against control. I don't know that it's got the speed to win. Terramander ends up being a kind of a slow option. It works pretty well in ramp, like in Simic ramp it worked pretty good, but in this in this type of a deck, maybe oh gosh, was I wrong? I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> but it looks like it had is it written all over it. It does work better as a two casting five five. It's just a little too susceptible to little it's a one one. I mean it, any kind of prick and it dies. Even a even a fanatical firebrand that's on the field, when you cast it, they can prick it right when you adapt it. So if that's if they do that in response, then it's he's toast and then he dies. And I still haven't seen electro dominance. I'd like to maybe I'll craft one of those in the next couple of weeks and try and sneak in electro dominance. Of course, um, we would have a lot more staying power versus control with uh, oh don't tell me good game I hate that crap that's so annoying. Um, if we dropped in uh, Niv Mizzet, we would have uh, a lot more. Staying power. Drop Niv Mizzet, can't be countered. Now we're starting to draw. Actually, that's the missing piece. And it fits nicely because the, the mana base ends up being pretty balanced. So I would just swap out Niv Mizzet for Chemister's Insight that I have in there. And maybe something else in the top end. Uh, overall, it's not too bad though. Ends up playing out pretty good. So I kind of like that deck. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Uh, have a good time playing. Drop me any comments, any hints, any tips. I appreciate it. And do remember to uh, subscribe, like I said, for more videos like this. Have a good time playing some magic.